All right, warm welcome from my side. Um, I'm Bernd Müller, uh, working at GND in Munich, responsible for the connectivity and device solutions uh, division there and responsible for everything that is related around connectivity, devices, networks, and so forth. Um, you've seen in the introductory video a lot of uh, elements that are today present in the media, especially also present here on this exhibition. It's about connected machines, about security, about autonomous things going back and forth. And I would like to take a little step back and say, okay, is all of this coming only with 5G or are we already in the midst of this uh, rapid changing environment? And if you take a look at that one, this um, digital disruption is happening all around us. Um, so the, the digital is now is the slogan. Everything that brings a value when being digitized will become digital. Same applies for automation and for connectivity. If you think about some businesses and how they grew over the past years and where they are now, the biggest taxi company in the world is Uber. They don't own any cars like the city communities would do. It's purely based on a digital model where, from a convenience-driven factor, the user can more easily subscribe to a car. One of the biggest phone companies, if not the biggest one, is Skype. It's not the typical landline or cellular company. They do internet communication. And the biggest accommodation company is Airbnb. They don't own any real estate like the big hotel change, hotel chains. Airbnb has a very modern, very nice, and very convenient digital business where users can book accommodation, they can rank it, they can evaluate how good it is, and they can actually give credits if they liked it. So all of that would not have been possible without digital processes already being applied today. Now, with 5G, we will see many more of those devices becoming connected. There are various statistics, like whether it's 35 billion devices in 24 or 30 billion in 25, doesn't matter. It's just the sheer magnitude of connected devices will grow rapidly over the next four to five years. It's various devices. You can see in the middle there, there are devices in the consumer element, there are consumer, there are devices in the variables, there are industrial uh, applications, there is a little cat and a dog there, actually, which is remarkable because today is the International Day of the Dog. I didn't know this until this morning, until I heard it in the radio, but it matches the slide. Um, so all of those devices at one point will become connected or are connected already today. Um, so that's what we call the Internet of Things. 5G is something that we consider the superhighway that allows the connection of additional devices at a rapid speed um, much faster than we are used to today. But there are three essential pillars which we need to cover in order to make sure that this rapidly growing ecosystem does not become vulnerable. And here we have to focus on three pillars which are called connectivity, security and identity. So those devices obviously have to become connected, otherwise data cannot flow. The data has to flow in a secure manner, otherwise the weakest point in the chain might become the angle of attack to penetrate the entire network. And you have to make sure that those devices carry a unique and a solid identity to make those devices reachable and addressable in the ecosystem. The key ingredients for this market and to make it successful, you can see on this slide. First of all, we need to deploy and connect the individual things. Those things will then securely transmit data. This data can be analyzed and exploited and digested by machines, by backend algorithms, by machine learning, by deep learning. And last but not least, you need to control the device identity and the device itself throughout its lifetime. You have to make sure that it has a unique, identifiable identity. All of this needs to be hands-free and scalable. Think about you have 25 billion devices connected in five years from now. 
if you think about that magnitude, it's hard to bring it into perspective. It's about one million devices connected per hour. That makes it a bit more tangible. That cannot be a manual process. You can't ask people to put in a million SIM cards at a time in those devices. Physical SIM cards, break them out, fiddle around and do that. It has to be a digital automated process which is seamless, which is quick, which is scalable. And it has to, has to support peak times. For example, if all of those devices are all of a sudden lying under the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve and people want to unpack it, you have to make sure that those systems are up and running with an utmost reliability. The data has to be protected from an end-to-end -end point of view. The data has to be sent via standardized protocols, otherwise we just screw up the system because it's going to uh, be too granular and we have too many competing standards or no standards at all. The devices um, have to be secure and they have also to be the ability to be remotely recovered. What happens if those devices all of a sudden get bricked, meaning they are no longer accessible? Do you send fleets of mechanics around and trying to revive those applications or those devices? You can't. So you have to make sure that this connectivity stays alive no matter in what state this device is. And of course, it's all based on reliable connectivity. That all sounds great. And everybody will understand that uh, with the scaling of 5G, those are requirements that we need to capture. But where are we today? There are hardly any 5G networks out there at this point. Still, we run 2G, 3G, 4G networks at scale. And all of those digital processes are today already accommodated in those device classes. Some of them might look familiar to you, others are a little bit hard to read. There are phones out there today which are already using embedded SIM technology, not a physical SIM card, the left-hand side. A lot of uh, tablets, laptops are using embedded SIM technology. Wearables, watches, smartwatches and so forth are using this technology and a lot of devices in the automotive and IoT uh, environment are using this technology too. It's a seamless technology. Those devices become activated and they all utilize one common denominator. And this common denominator has kind of um, survived the last 20 plus years um, without having actually seen any massive fraud incident or attack. And that's the SIM. The digital security controller which protects and secures the communication, the access to the network, and which also has the opportunity to provide a digital identity to the individual device. We have a couple of showcases also here at the show, uh, I'll come to this one later, where we are exactly utilizing this strength and take this to the next level. It's not reintroducing the SIM card, the SIM card has been there for the last 20 plus years, but it's how to make sure that with, this, with the growing population of devices, the growing demand on security, you find a common denominator to use in order to provide connectivity, security and identity. Security is actually the main concern for the massive rollout of those ecosystems. About two-thirds of enterprises have included the security aspect um, in their portfolio as a key portfolio item. About half of the companies are saying security and privacy concerns are at the top of my list. And about one third of the companies are actually saying security and privacy issues are the biggest hurdle to roll things out. So no matter where you look at, whether it's the two third or the one half or the one third element, security is the common pillar where everybody says we need to fix it. How to fix it? Today, it's kind of uh, given that those networks run in a reliable manner. <clears throat> if you have 25 billion devices connected from high-class engines and cars down to $2 devices which act as a sensor sitting at some um, radiator relaying like a 30-byte data um, once a month, all of those devices carry the same burden. Once they become penetrated, it's a possible attack vector 
into the network. Now let's map this in a 5G environment. That's a pretty complex and messy picture for purpose. It shows the complexity of a 5G ecosystem. Now in that case, it's autonomous cars. They will drive around the city, they will constantly relay data, whether it's to the insurance systems, whether it's to the health system, whether it's generic cloud, whether it's back to the car manufacturer. Accidents occur and then healthcare providers have to be notified. So in a nutshell, it's machines and sensor talking to algorithms, relaying data. One of the biggest issues that you will have in the modern world is that Everybody thinks that machines are good in digesting data, analyzing data, and making sure that it's accurate what they spit out at the end. It's all good. But what happens if the data that comes from the, from the origin, from the edge, is actually wrong? Those algorithms just continue to do what they are good in doing, it, but they take the wrong results based on the wrong input. So you need to make sure that you secure the data also at its origin. And for us, that's the vision that we as GND, now being in the business since 1852, now not with uh, digital telecommunications, but with many other technologies in the past and still today, that's the vision. Data is the oil and connectivity is the pipeline for the digital society. And our vision is here really to help secure and enable the connection and the monetization of those connections for the digital society. In order to do that, we have introduced what we call the GND IoT Security Suite, which follows the various steps in the deployment and in the life cycle of the products. It's about onboarding the products, getting the identity on board. It's about secure access into the network or into a cloud backend. It's about encrypting the data, and it's about signing the data at its origin. This four-step approach is here simplified with a car which has all those components included. You can easily map it onto any other um, uh, model as well. Let's map it onto a campus network. On a campus network, and we've seen the, the presentation just before about uh, a, a huge factory which is uh, doing uh, like the body shop uh, for cars. You have devices which are consuming a huge amount of data and relaying a huge amount of data. You have vehicles driving around there. You have trucks coming in, going out. All of those devices are talking to each other. One fault in the system will penetrate the entire reliability of the campus. So what we have done is, in order to uh, show that, is we have taken our solution, which, which we call Aeron, and which, by the way, has just uh, what won an award from Juniper Awards a couple of days back for the best IoT security innovation of the year and applied it to a real life example which you can actually show, see down the hall. So Lufthansa, Industry Solutions and also Uberge as partners. And it's a very tangible, very visual, but also a very acoustical, rewarding experience uh, if you go there. This container is equipped with a sensor um, which detects collisions during the lifetime and the journey of this container. It relays the data back into the back end to enable Lufthansa to track incidents that occur during the journey of the, of the container and make then a real-time um, judgment on what to do once this container arrives at the port of destination. Our solution, and that's one of the four pillars that you have seen in the previous page, secures the data, signs the data as it, at its origin, making sure that it's tamper-proof, that the data collected by the collision detection sensor in the container is authentic, that it's not tampered with, so that the backend knows this is actually data coming from this sensor, from no one else, and it's actually digitally signed. And that makes the whole thing really proven end-to-end -end, and in real time a huge asset for the industry. And you can apply this basically to all other types of devices that you might think of and which we have seen on the third slide with all those device classes. Coming to an end of that one, I think on time, there's still some uh, time for questions probably. Um, think about 5G 
not as something which is completely new. But think about 5G as something that is so big and so huge that we have to get it right from the beginning and also utilize what we have already done with digitalization and security aspects from the existing networks. Because once this train starts rolling with 5G and those billions of devices become connected, it's hard to retrofit this solution to make it secure. So we have to get it right from the beginning. We are here to help you on this journey. Thank you very much.